Hey, everybody. Hope you're having Our mid week kind of was a little rough. Um, I want to get to part two of this video with the exorcist Malachi Martin in his interview. I hope you enjoyed the last video and I do apologize. I'm trying to still adjust like the music because um, you know me, I love creepy, creepy, creepy music and I want to be able to play that while he's talking as well. So my last video, the music was just a little bit too loud. So I'm hoping that this, what I did, fixed it. With further ado, let's get into it. Got any questions or have any comments? You know, leave them in the chat or leave them. Out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been written up very recently by a, a simple reporter who simply chronicled the entire thing. But I've existed at ones which went on for oh, 17 weeks. Uh, oh my goodness! Measuring in weeks. Sometimes it's only a week. Sometimes it's only hours. It depends. It depends on the tenacity of the demon in in possession. It depends on the antecedents of the person. It depends on so many factors. You you just can't predict. You go into it blind in that sense. You said uh, again. You said demon. So the majority of possessions are by demons. That's right. They are all all all, all true possession is by demons. Now you see, there's a distinction between possession and obsession. Mm. But obsession is where somebody Now listen to this He is being bothered continually By, for instance, cases I have in hand in the present moment Of people who are bothered continually by By appearances of animals with human faces Bothering them Or pressures on them at night uh, When they want to go to sleep Yes uh, And any psychiatrist, they're going to tell you you're crazy, okay? When in reality, you're not. Like I said before, most psychiatrists, they don't believe in the afterlife. They dang sure do not believe in demons or anything of the like. Funny faces and funny things happening to them. And you finally... When you rationalize it all and had the person examined physically and mentally, you come to the conclusion there are objective events taking place and they are being bothered and obsessed by a demon and then you set about chasing that demon away. Of those that have gone past the medical doctor and yes. the psychiatrists, yes. what percentage would you say turn out to be actual cases of possession? Uh, my experience would say about 80%. 80%. 80%. Wow. 80%. Then I would then I would also ask, you said oh. examined by two psychiatrists who right. do not necessarily believe in God. There we go. That's, what, That's general... what I just said. I just said that like they do not believe in demons, they don't believe in God, they don't believe in any of that. Well, uh, generally, I have always tried to uh, uh, use the the services of the skills of psychiatrists who will tell you I'm an atheist. You know, I I really don't believe in practically in God. Really? So, well, they're not influenced, therefore, by any prejudice. So then there is a good use for even the atheists. <laughs> Although I must tell you that they, every, uh, I've only found one or two psychiatrists who wanted to assist in exorcism. And generally, okay. one, of them, one of them I wrote about, Dr. Hammond, uh, he simply gave up all psychiatry. He did. Wow. Once he went into the real thing. Yeah. My, my question was going to be, how many... Um, people uh, who thought they were possessed mm -hmm. uh, were diagnosed, in your opinion, incorrectly by psychiatrists who might tend to... Pretty sure it was a lot. Because of their own prejudice, uh, want to claim this uh, apparent malady as, uh, as their own territory. Uh, so how many never made it to you because they were incorrectly diagnosed? A very great number, especially when we come down to a thing called MPDs. It's a, it's an abbreviation used by psychiatrists 
for multiple personality disorders. That is, you know, say, let's take the name Hilda, and Hilda says that she becomes Mary in certain occasions, then right. she becomes a Joan on other occasions, right. and she becomes Geraldine on third occasion, you know, uh, multiple personality. And yes, people do have multiple personality disorder. However, when you are possessed, you really do have the demon's personality or whatever you want to call it in your personality. Personality disorder. And uh, for a long time, MPDs were simply analyzed as MPDs. And then, under certain circumstances, they began to find out that it was much more than that. Uh, it was a case of demonic possession. And that has to be very carefully distinguished because you, you can make a dreadful mistake and think a true MPD is possessed or vice versa, that a person really possessed is an MPD. Well, then I would ask, I guess, can a person be possessed by more than one entity? Oh, 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 oh yes. yes. And the same demon can possess three people at the same time. Oh, oh my. my gosh. It all depends. The, the, the variation is tremendous. What could and, you uh, imagine? Uh, nobody okay, let me say is, this. Could you imagine being a priest? And you know that you already supposedly have the name because you have to get the name out of this demon or you're never going to excise this demon from that person. Could you imagine knowing that this one demon is so powerful that it can possess more than one person at the same time? If this doesn't scare the hell out of people, I don't know what would. I, I mean, I really don't. You see, Art, this is a very dirty, unhealthy, inhuman, insalubrious, uh, wicked, uh, and uh, unnatural process and event that nobody should touch it with a barge pole except somebody trained, and even then, to be very careful, because it's high. And the archdiocese, even in the, the ones in Rome, the Roman Catholic, the church, the Pope, actually has came out and said, yes, we perform exorcist, exorcisms. Highly dangerous. For instance, if you start any nonsense, real, real exorcism, and a lot of people don't know the difference between that and therapy, the, the difference between that and prayer, uh, our healing prayer, deliverance prayer, as they call it. Uh, but if you start something like that and don't finish it, you're going to have trouble for the rest of your life. Well, let me I was say going this to ask too. you let me, about let me say uh, this. So, growing up in a Christian, um, non denomination church, well, younger it was the Baptist, but on up until my father was a pastor, it was when my father became a pastor, it was non denominational. My thing is, with a lot of Baptist, Methodist, and even some of the Catholic priests, do not believe in exorcisms. They do not believe in speaking in tongues, even though it is a divine language that is spoke about in the Bible. Also, if you read the Bible, if you've ever read the Bible, you know Jesus was casting out demons. Now, even in speaking in tongues in the divine language, I feel the reason why they don't believe in it is because only Jesus can do that. But yet he says he gives you gifts. So which is it? Uh, that's what confuses me is that the, uh, probably the reason why I don't go to a Baptist church I don't really go to church because there's so many they they've gotten away from in my opinion they've gotten away from what that bible actually said so you're telling me that if god gives me a gift which i i feel like me being able to communicate or or feel or see you know spirits maybe in a different realm than what we're in or communicate with them and you know they know that i'm there and i acknowledge them being there to me is that a gift 
Yes, for me, it could. For me, in my eyes, yes, it is. Oh, I wish I could get into one story, but I'm not going to do that right now. I just don't understand how preachers and priests can sit there and say, only God can cast out a demon or only God can do certain things, which that is true. But he also gives us the ability to perform stuff like that. I have been, I have witnessed someone speaking in tongues multiple times, but you can't have, well, I guess you can, but I've never seen the person speaking in tongues interpret the same thing that they're speaking. So there's always had an interpretation or ter interpreter, and it's really never been the same person interpreting what this other person's speaking. So I, I do believe God gives you certain abilities if you choose to accept them. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. But the danger to yourself, and I will do that when we come back. Dr. Uh, Martin, stand by. We'll come back to you in a moment. Sure. We're at the bottom of the hour. My guest is Dr. Malachi Martin. For 30 years, he did exorcisms and was in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. It's going to be a very interesting evening. I suggest you stay right where you are. I remember this is broadcast over the radio. Back now to Dr. Malachi Martin. Doctor, are you there? Of course I am. Good. Good. I'm into everything. I'm so fascinated. <laughs> uh, doctor, um, is there now or is there going to be an antichrist there, listen listen whether listen. there is now is a question there is going to be an antichrist and i think the listen to his explanation i've heard it this way my whole life best thing we can do is talk about his public appearance all right. Because he may already be in existence. Uh, for me to say he is in existence would immediately provoke the questions, where is he and what is he doing? Yes. Now I want to avoid that. Yes. Uh, but there, there, he will be manifest publicly within a reasonable amount of time. Most people who are 20 something or 30 something will come across Antichrist in their life. I'm 76. I may not. How will we know him? We will know him by two main qualities. First of all, he will arrive at a time when we as a race have what looks like insuperable problems. Supposing we have, we discover we have insuperable, really insuperable environmental problems. Yeah, yes, sir. Supposing we find we have insuperable, uh, uh, health problems, a disease, yes, wasting, sir. wasting nation after nation. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. He will have solutions for those problems. He will have wide solutions, Look, solutions that are real solutions. In our world, not just here in the United States, but in our world. And number two, his the result of his of his intervention. And his, the, the results of his, of his solutions will be such that people will say, you must be God. And he will accept that attribute. He will accept that. Yes, he will accept that. That will be, those are the three marks of the Antichrist. Well, um, you've already done it to me. You're already giving me chills. I've been a talk show host, uh, doctor, for about in this incarnation, uh, 13 years uh, long time. doing this program. And in the last several years, Doctor, I've begun to observe something that I just picked a word and I began to call it the quickening. <laughs> and um, It's a very good word, Art. <laughs> yeah, it's, a very, it's a very discerning word. You, you must speak from experience. Well, you must. I, I speak from watching the news of what man is doing by the day. Yeah. Doctor, and by this quickening, I mean 
socially i'm i'm watching these horrible things happening uh yesterday is just an example uh in sacramento a man uh was holed up and uh killed uh his two children in front of his wife and then in front of his wife killed himself this kind of senseless mindless i don't unbelievable imagine even back then imagine this like right now what is going on even in the united states think about that believable behavior socially and it, it, it's not it's not isolated my god i know it's not isolated politically uh, doctor i look around and i see no sense to what what is going on uh, we have lost our way we have lost our way there's no doubt about that no doubt. could i stick in something at this moment arch could i make a remark you may indeed there is in scripture and in tradition and uh, by the way i'm a roman catholic so i have some i'm not sort of dependent on the bible as protestants are and that's their choice but there is a thing called the mystery of iniquity and it's a it's a, a very constant teaching of the bible and of religious men and women and it's this that evil is allowed from time to time to so dull the senses of men and women and to so disturb the equilibrium of their minds that they do crazy real crazy mad bad things mm -hmm. and here is the point that sends gives me a chill i'm 76 and i noticed that in the last 20 25 years of my life the incident two years after this interview right here he died when he was 78 that of such disequilibrium the incidents of that seem to be much more frequent than when i was younger yes much more yeah there are much more shocking things happen and it's not that we're getting to know them no 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 the world was connected at that time communications were slow when i was young say when i was 25 or when i was 20 but we everything all the news got around but we never heard such a plethora of shocking unbelievably violent unnatural uh happenings to ordinary people so the mystery of iniquity it, it seems to be pressuring and the idea in the teaching about the mystery of iniquity is that there is a, a darkness in the mental darkness that closes in and makes ordinary people do the most extraordinary and shocking things well that's one part of it a uh, horrible i mean honestly you guys think about this and my squeaky chair i apologize you think about what is going on like i have already said this it is it behooves me to think of the people that actually are in our midst that you know might be possessed and or you know in How do I explain that? And we just don't know it yet, or it hasn't manifested enough that we know what's going on. And I really do believe or that they don't know that they're possessed at that, at that moment, if that makes sense. Well, scary part of it, but also you mentioned the environment. Yeah. I've been monitoring stories lately, Doctor, um, about uh, the ozone, about deformed frogs, which are said to be an indicator species. Uh, I have had people on from various disciplines that you may not agree with who call themselves uh, remote viewers, uh, to prophets, to Native Americans. And frankly, they all tell a very similar story with regard to what they think is immediately in front of us in the next few years i happen to agree with them i happen to be have gone further in my thought than merely agreeing with them i think there is a case of radiation i think that uh, we are being radiated in such a way that it distorts the chemical balance of our system our mental system and that slowly but surely a vast section of the public is being dulled 
doesn't see what's happening. Yes. Doesn't realize what is being done to them. These slowly boiling frogs. I don't frogs. think they're being dulled. I just think that we are, for me, I think we're being brought up in a supposedly Christian society, which now it's not a Christian society. When I was growing up, it was a Christian society. You didn't go out there and rob. You didn't go out there and steal. You didn't go out there and, you know, do what is going on now. You've got a train car out in California that they're just going and they're just taking crap off of it. So there is so much evil in our world that I think that's where my mind goes. It's like, why are, how has it become this way? Yes, we've had people in in power and i'm not just saying the president the vice president or the cabinet members it comes all the way down to your city and local in my book you know the soft on crime crap you know you've got it's like they want and i i I put this on my email so many years ago and it is so true today abraham lincoln we will not destroy America will not be destroyed from the outside, but from within. And look what is happening. It is being destroyed from within. And it's like there's not enough of us that are standing up and going, I I love our country. We have got to stop. I mean, and it, it isn't just a political thing. It is a spiritual battle that is going on. I mean... Back when we were growing up, and and everybody has seen it. I mean, we're Gen X. So, you know, we left our freaking doors open at night. You know, up until probably the maybe early, mid-90s. Think about how long ago that was. My grandparents in Headland, Alabama, always left their doors open. Always. Until then. Somebody broke in came in on my grandmother and my grandfather. They never, ever trusted anybody. They never, ever, you know, left their crap open. But it was just like, why? Why is it that people feel the need to steal from somebody else? Even when we didn't have money, when my kids were growing up, we didn't have a whole lot of money. I mean, we didn't. And this is another thing I want to get into because he he mentions this later on. Is called a generational curse. And maybe he's already mentioned it. And I do feel like, you know, we have to change that that generational curse. We have to change it ourselves. And so that's what we were trying to do. And it's just like, shit, we can't get ahead. <laughs> you know, now we're all out a whole lot better off. You know, anyway, most people are when they are empty nesters. But it's just like, you know, we struggle when we were kids. My kids struggled when they were kids because we struggled when they were growing up. But we didn't go out and steal from people. We made a way and we made it happen. That's what I don't understand. Everybody talks about the American dream. Well, the way the American dream is, isn't just buying your own home. It is being successful in your career, in your mainly in priority in your family we have so many broken homes we have so many broken young people it amazes me I, and i swear i feel like that is what is going on in, in talking about this hostage to the devil and i do feel like people are being are hostages to the devil and his demons you know and it's I don't know. It, it's this this right here got me thinking a lot, a lot. Because there's so much. We have wars around the world that the United States shouldn't even be involved in. One, yes. Israel, yes. The other one, no. We have people that have lost their lives over two her with two hurricanes that just came in the last three weeks. They have literally lost everything. In our own country that we pay taxes 
We pay taxes to the government. We are actually overpaying. And they can't even take care of without asking for that money back. Now, you know what? I am going to get a little political. I want my money back from Ukraine. The billions, the $358 billion for fiscal year 2024. It was at $256 billion for 2023. I want that crap back. Because it is getting to the point where Americans have got to take a stand for everybody. And I'm getting tired of also the racial crap. We all bleed red. People that sit there and talk about that and talk about that, they're racist themselves. I didn't raise my kids to be racist. And I don't understand why we have to be such a... And now I think this year, actually in, in the past like six, seven, eight, nine months, we have actually started to come, come together as a country. Maybe a little bit. But... I don't know this this video. I'm we're gonna do several different parts of of this um, radio interview, and I know <laughs> I have turned a 24 snippet of this three hour into an hour. So anyway, <laughs> you guys, I think we're gonna go. Um, we'll finish this um, on the next video, not the whole thing, and I will try my best not to talk over and commentate as much as I have done. I'll try. But I do want to put my own opinions out there. But you guys have a great rest of your week and a weekend. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend coming up. Until our next video, stay soft.